Welcome to the Medtronic online training for changing the Minimed Silhouette Infusion Set. This course will show you how to fill the reservoir and insert the infusion set. Do not attempt to insert the infusion set prior to receiving the in-person training. Before you begin, wash your hands and gather the items you need to fill the reservoir and change the infusion set. In this example, we'll be using a Minimed Silhouette Infusion Set and a sill serter as the insertion device. Do not insert the infusion set until instructed to do so. Remember, you should always check your blood sugar two to three hours after each infusion set change. Checking your blood sugar is the only way to confirm that your set is properly inserted and that you are receiving insulin. Therefore, it is best to avoid changing your infusion set at bedtime. To begin, press Menu. Then press down to Reservoir and Tubing and press Select. Select New Reservoir. The pump will instruct you to remove the infusion set from your body and to remove the reservoir from the pump. Disconnect the infusion set you're currently wearing and remove it from your body. Remove the reservoir from your pump by turning the tubing connector counterclockwise. Safely dispose of the used infusion set and reservoir. In order to make room for a newly filled reservoir, the piston inside the pump will need to be moved back to its starting position. To rewind the piston, select Rewind. The rewinding screen will appear while the piston rewinds. Once the piston is rewound, Rewind Complete will appear on the screen. Your pump will then instruct you to fill the reservoir and connect the tubing to the reservoir. You can now set the pump down and prepare to fill the reservoir. Before you can begin filling the reservoir, you will need to clean the top of the insulin vial. To reduce the risk of air bubbles, make sure the insulin vial is at room temperature. When you're ready, wipe the top of the insulin vial with alcohol and wait until it dries. Remove the new reservoir from the package. Let's stop for a minute and look at the different parts of the reservoir. The transfer guard attaches the reservoir to the insulin vial so it can be filled with insulin. The reservoir barrel holds your two to three day supply of insulin. The O-rings prevent insulin from leaking out of the reservoir. The plunger rod is used to fill the reservoir with insulin. Now, pull the plunger so the top of the O-ring is positioned at the amount of insulin you plan to put in the reservoir. Be careful not to pull the plunger completely out of the reservoir. Hold the reservoir by the blue transfer guard and connect it to the insulin vial by pressing down. Be careful not to push down on the plunger during this step. It's very important to push air into the vial before taking insulin out. To do this, keep the insulin vial upright, place your thumb on the plunger, and firmly push the air from the reservoir into the insulin vial. Continue to hold down the plunger with your thumb. Flip the insulin vial over so it is on top. Make sure you are holding the vial with your other hand. Slowly release your thumb pressure from the plunger rod and the reservoir will start filling with insulin. When the reservoir stops filling, slowly pull down on the plunger until the top black O-ring lines up with the desired amount. Keep in mind, every small line on the reservoir represents about 20 units of insulin. Tap the reservoir hard enough to make the air bubbles rise to the top of the reservoir. Slowly push up on the plunger rod to move the air bubbles back into the insulin vial. Pull down on the plunger to fill the reservoir to the number of units desired. Repeat as needed until air bubbles are removed from the reservoir. Look in the window of the blue transfer guard to make sure no air bubbles remain. Any air bubbles the size of champagne bubbles are normal, so don't worry about these. To avoid getting liquid on the top of the reservoir, flip the reservoir over so the reservoir is on top. With the vial down on the table, hold the transfer guard with one hand. With your other hand, turn the reservoir counterclockwise and then pull straight up to remove it from the transfer guard. Be careful not to press on the O-rings. Disconnect the transfer guard from the vial and dispose of it properly. Remove the infusion set from the package. Let's review the parts of the infusion set. The silhouette comes in two separate pieces. One piece is a length of tubing with two connectors on either end and the other is the insertion piece. Let's start by looking at the tubing and connectors. On one end of the tubing is the tubing connector that attaches the infusion set to the reservoir. On the other end is the infusion site connector that attaches to the insertion piece. The insertion piece is made up of several parts. An introducer needle is used to insert the soft, thin cannula into your body. It is removed after the cannula is inserted. 
The cannula is a thin, flexible tube that surrounds the introducer needle. Once inserted, it will deliver insulin into your body. The cannula housing is the round, plastic section that holds the cannula and insertion needle and allows you to disconnect at the infusion site. A paper backing covers the adhesive. The adhesive sticks the infusion set to your body. Make sure both the top of the reservoir and the inside of the tubing connector are dry before connecting them. Liquid can temporarily block the vents on the tubing connector. This may result in the delivery of too little or too much insulin, which can cause hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia. If any liquid has gotten on the top of the reservoir or inside the connector, start over again with a new reservoir and set. To connect the tubing to the reservoir, hold the tubing by the connector and place it on the top of the reservoir. Find the right position by turning and gently pushing the tubing connector until you feel it slide smoothly in place. Turn the tubing connector clockwise until the reservoir and the tubing connector lock with a click. The tubing connector should not be loose or come apart from the reservoir. You should not have the set inserted into your body when doing this step. Tap the reservoir to make any air bubbles rise to the top of the reservoir. Purge the air bubbles that have risen to the top by slowly pushing up on the plunger until all of the air bubbles have been pushed out of the reservoir and you see a small amount of insulin in the tubing. If you're not able to push insulin into the tubing, disconnect the tubing connector and then reconnect it. Unscrew the plunger rod counterclockwise until it completely separates from the reservoir. Be careful not to pull down on the plunger as you unscrew the plunger rod and avoid squeezing the O-rings. The reservoir is now filled and connected to the tubing. Pick up the pump to review the next step on the screen. While you are filling your reservoir, the backlight may have turned off. Press any button to turn the screen on again. If your pump is locked, select Load Reservoir. You will see the unlock screen. Press the arrow that is highlighted to unlock the pump and continue to the next screen. The new reservoir screen appears. Since you have already filled the reservoir and connected the tubing, select Next. The next step on the screen instructs you to place reservoir into pump and lock. You will now remember, you should have already rewound the piston in your pump and you should not have the set connected to your body when performing this step. Put the reservoir in the pump and turn the tubing connector clockwise until you feel the reservoir lock into place. The tubing connector should line up with the groove in the battery cap of your pump. On your pump, Select Next to go to the Load Reservoir screen. With Load highlighted, press and keep holding Select until the screen shows Complete. When you see Complete, Do Not Connect to Body, and a yellow checkmark on the screen, select Next. You will now fill the empty tubing with insulin. Now you will need to remove the protective cap from the infusion set connector so you can see the insulin drops coming from the end of the tubing when it is filled. To remove the cap, Squeeze the infusion set connector arms and gently pull the protective cap off. Hold the set so that the needle is pointing down. With fill highlighted on the screen, press and hold select. The pump screen will display the amount of insulin being moved through the tubing. Continue to hold select until you see insulin drops coming out at the end of the needle. The number of units shown on the screen will vary each time you fill the tubing. If you release select too early, just press and hold the select button again until you see drops come out the end of the needle. After you see the drops, release the select button. Hold the tubing to the light to check for air in the tubing. If you do see air, once again press and hold select until the air exits the end of the tubing. Then press right and select next. You'll see the fill cannula screen. You have successfully filled the reservoir and infusion set tubing. If you notice anything unusual after filling the infusion set tubing, such as insulin continuing to drip or squirt from the end of the tubing, do not insert it. Start over with a new reservoir and infusion set. Next, you will prepare to insert the infusion set. Next, you will select your infusion site. Some commonly recommended areas for infusion sites are your abdomen, except for the two inches around your belly button, your hips and buttocks, your upper thighs, or the back of your arms. Your healthcare professional can help you select the best sites for you. When choosing your new infusion site, make sure it's away from your previous site. If you give insulin repeatedly in the same area over a long period of time, it can cause the tissue to thicken and insulin won't be absorbed properly. Rotating your site is key to keeping your infusion sites healthy. Some people find it helpful to use an organized method for rotating sites. 
It really doesn't matter which method you use, as long as you rotate your sights. Clean your infusion site properly with an alcohol wipe or prep wipe. Allow your site to air dry. Let's review the parts of the sill serter. At the bottom of the serter are two arms that rest against your skin during insertion. Above the arms is the serter base and the lock and release handle that will hold the insertion piece. At the top is a single white button that is used to trigger the insertion device and insert the needle. To load the infusion set, press down on the lock and release handle exposing the two teeth. Place the insertion piece into the base until the holes line up with the teeth. Release the handle to lock the insertion piece in place. While holding the serter with one hand, use your thumb to slide the serter back into the loaded position. You should hear a click and feel it lock into place. To expose the introducer needle and cannula, gently pull off the blue needle guard. To insert the infusion set, place the arms of the serter flat against the prepared infusion site. The needle should be inserted at a 20 to 45 degree angle or as instructed by your trainer. Rock the arms slightly forward to achieve a deeper angle or back to achieve a more shallow angle. Once the sill serter is in position, firmly press the white button at the top of the serter to insert the introducer needle. To release the insertion piece from the serter, place one finger on the cannula housing. With the other hand, press the lock and release handle so the teeth are no longer locked in the insertion piece. Slide the serter back away from the introducer piece. Holding the cannula housing with one hand, Remove the front paper backing and smooth the adhesive securely to the skin. Place a finger on the front portion of the cannula housing. With the other hand, squeeze the gray arms and pull back to remove the introducer needle. While keeping the set secure, gently remove the remaining paper and smooth to skin. Dispose of the introducer needle into a sharps container. Now connect the infusion set tubing to the cannula housing by sliding the connector directly into the cannula housing until you hear an audible click. Now that the introducer needle is removed, the cannula is empty and will need to be filled with insulin. It takes 0.7 units to fill both the 13 and 17 millimeter cannula. To fill the cannula, select Fill. The Fill Cannula screen will appear with either dashes or the amount you previously used. To change the fill amount, press Select and use the arrows to scroll to the amount needed and press select again. If the amount is correct, press down to fill now. Press select. The pump will begin to fill the cannula and display the amount. Congratulations, you have successfully filled your reservoir and changed your site. From time to time, you'll need to disconnect from your infusion site for activities such as bathing or swimming. For your convenience, the Silhouette Infusion Set allows you to temporarily disconnect from your pump. To disconnect, Place a finger on the cannula housing. Gently squeeze both sides of the connector and pull the connector needle straight out from the cannula housing. To protect the infusion site, insert the disconnect cover by sliding the cover into the cannula housing until you hear a click.